All right, it's official. Today is the day where Microsoft drops Windows 10 support as we reach October 14th. And today I wanna to talk about what this means for users, what options the users have, and how they could potentially even switch their operating system entirely if they're sick and tired of Windows. We're gonna be talking about all this today. And what does this actually mean for users at this point? Well, Microsoft will no longer provide free security updates, bug fixes, or technical support for Windows 10 starting today. Windows 10 will still run on existing devices, but it will be vulnerable to security risks because new issues as they are discovered will not be patched but they do offer a program which, which you can join mainly for IT professionals as there are a lot of devices using Windows 10, including kiosks out there in the real world that aren't that easy to update. So there is something called extended security updates. So this post here just says, as a reminder, Windows 10 will reach end of support October 14, 2025. And they just basically say, move to Windows 11, a more modern, secure, and highly efficient computing experience. I go into depth why it really isn't in a different video. I'm gonna post that in the description below, but let's talk about what are our options at this point. Well, the three options given to you by Microsoft is one, installing Windows 11 on your current PC. They want you to go to start settings, update and security, Windows update, and then click check for updates. This is if you're on Windows 10. You can do this as they are trying to offer a free update to Windows 11. The second option, which is a little ridiculous, is just to buy a new PC with Windows 11. Not many of us are gonna actually do this, as some of the hardware that we're running more than likely is old anyway. And if we wanna keep it running, we're gonna to have to choose one of the other options. The other option is the extended security updates program. So if you need a little more time before moving to a Configure Copilot Plus PC, definitely stay away from those or another Windows 11 device. The Consumer Extended Security Updates program can protect your Windows 10 device up to a year after October 14, 2025. And then it says, if you're a pro, see the extended security updates. We're gonna be checking that out as it doesn't mean you have to be an IT pro or even have a commercial device. Instead, you can join this program and it is a way to receive updates until October 15th of 2025. The one thing a lot of users are gonna be looking at is what does it cost to upgrade? Well, it's free. So Windows 10 PCs that are currently running Windows 10 and meet specific hardware requirements, we'll check those requirements in a little bit, are actually eligible for a free upgrade. Again, if you go to Start, Settings, Update, and Security, Windows Update, and then you click Check for Updates, you should be able to receive a free upgrade. This is the easiest way to go, as it's gonna take whatever data you currently have on your computer and just transfer it over basically to a updated Windows 11 image. This is probably the most seamless way for most users, but for some users, this is not an option, specifically because they're not going to meet the minimum hardware specifications. And for those users, we need a different way to get support or go somewhere else. One thing I'll say is, if you're not keeping backups of your data, this is a warning to do it right now. As security vulnerabilities exist, if you do choose to use Windows 10 without actually going through any of these steps, if you run into an issue at some point, you want that data backed up. It's important, take some time, do that first before you go through anything. In case you mess up, in case there is a vulnerability and you do get affected, always have backups. But for a lot of users who are using Windows 10, they don't necessarily know all the cool new features of Windows 11. And that's just a joke. As personally, I believe they've just been making Windows worse and worse with every version that they've been adding. Again, in my other video, I specify why exactly, but I'm gonna give you the shorthand here. Privacy issues, more and more advertisements, and more and more AI slot being pushed to you with every newer Windows update and version. But regardless, here's the pitch for you to go to Windows 11. So of course, they tell you that after October 14th, 2025, Microsoft will no longer provide free, keyword there, free software updates from Windows Update. So get to know Windows 11 and start comparing its features. This is only the short list here, but they say, Oh, you get better Windows backups with Windows 11. You get the smart app control feature and you get to sync your PC with your phone. Oh, so cool. But now let's get into the big differences because you'd be surprised at how much Windows 10 doesn't have when you look at Windows 11 according to Microsoft. Basically, all the check boxes up top are the things that you don't get, but that's quite a lot of stuff. Now, let's read through some of them to see if they're important at all. A new UI, well, most people don't care about that if they're on Windows 10 still. Smart recommendations in File Explorer and Start Menu. I don't know if that's part of the AI feature, but hard pass. Pass keys integrated with Windows Hello. 
cool. They're managing my passwords now. Wake on approach, lock on leave. I'd say that new hardware would be probably required for that. Smart app control. Again, another useless app. Seamless redocking. Live captions. Windows Studio effects. Auto HDR. Dynamic lighting. So on, so forth. All silly, silly things. Basically, it's just crap added on top of Windows 10 which leads me to talk about something called Tiny11. This is a script to build a trimmed down Windows 11 image. Basically, you can install Windows 11 and then trim it down, get all the bloat out of it, and it can officially be used on any Windows 11 release, not a specific build, as well as any language or architecture, which is fantastic. It's a wonderful debloating script if you want to use it. It's Tiny11. I'm going to put a link in the description below, and it tells you exactly what's being removed from the system. Look at all these things that are completely unnecessary that exist in Windows 11. It's a great project, great thing to know about, especially for users transitioning from Windows 10 to 11. If they don't want all the extra crap, Tiny11 is a great place to start. But let's be a little practical here. Most of us are going to choose one of three options. And one of those three options is the extended security updates. ESU is a program for Windows 10 that allows you to extend the security updates but it costs money. So individuals and organizations who elect to continue using Windows 10 after the support ends on October 14, 2025 will have this option of enrolling their PCs into a paid ESU subscription. Now I hear that people in the EU are potentially getting this for free. So if you are in the EU and you have Windows 10, check that out a little bit. It sounds like they're forcing Microsoft to give those updates for free. So if you wanna stay on Windows 10 for a while, this is definitely an option for you. Anyways, the limitations here include not having new features. Oh, shucks. Customer requested non-security updates. When in the hell did they ever do that? Design, change requests, and general support for Windows will not be supported past the 14th. So frequently asked questions here. How much does the ESU cost? I'd say that's the number one question. So the extended security updates for organizations and businesses, again, not only for organizations and businesses, it can be for users. You just have to sign up for an account and go through and pay money for this on Windows 10 can be purchased today through the Microsoft Volume Licensing Program at $61 per device for one year. Again, this is a lot to do with people in enterprise and corporations, which can't just make the switch so easily. They'll get an extra year basically to make the switch, but that's a hefty price, especially when Windows 11 is free, but some people definitely need to do this. One thing that they do say is that the ESU is available at no additional cost for Windows 10 virtual machines in the following services, and it gives you the services that are available. Now, that kind of sucks for us who have virtual machines that are Windows 10 and don't belong to one of these domains. Well, your SOL. So again, this ESU extended security updates is available for Windows 10 users to simply continue getting critical and important security fixes that Microsoft will release for a limited time to the subscribers and people who pay for them. Again, check if you're in the EU, you might be able to get this license for free. The program is primarily for organizations who need more time to migrate their systems, but of course, home users can use it as well who don't wanna upgrade quite yet or need some more time before upgrading. The funny part here is if you don't read through this carefully, you won't realize that they're pretty much going to support this for about three years at this point, because they say in year one, they're gonna be offering this, you know, 61 base price, but they, then they mention in year two, they're gonna double the price, and in year three, they're gonna triple the price. And the ideal candidate is one that has a PC that can't upgrade to Windows 11, basically unsupported CPUs or no TPM 2.0. Speaking of requirements, that's important, right? If you wanna to go to Windows 11, you gotta make sure to reach those requirements. This is really the second big option that Windows wants you to take if you can't get the extended security. And the first big option, of course, buy their new hardware. These are the system requirements. Basically, you need a processor with one gigs or faster with two or more cores and compatible 64-bit processor or system on chip SOC. You need at least four gigs of RAM, storage 64 gigs or larger. System firmware needs to be UEFI, boot compatible as well as secure boot compatible. You need TPM, which is the trusted platform TPM version 2.0, a graphics card compatible with DirectX 12 or later, and the display, that's just silly. It's not gonna stop you from installing a operating system just because you don't have a proper display. That's more of you won't be able to see your screen. Then they get into minimum system requirements for their new Copilot Plus PCs. I mean, at this point, wouldn't you think every single Copilot Plus PC should be able to run Windows 11? This is another silly requirement. And of course you need an internet connection to sign up your Microsoft account. Uh, I'm gonna say there are ways around having a Microsoft account. 
and linking your email to that account because that's just another way that they, that's just another gotcha that they want everyone to have a Microsoft account. Go check out Chris Titus Tech's latest video. I'm gonna put that in the description below on how to bypass that as well. If you're going to Windows 11, no, that's not your only option. So back on the TPM 2.0, this thing right here is probably the biggest gotcha for new users as it works as a hardware-based root of trust. Basically, it enables the secure boot function and quote unquote, ensures the operating system hasn't been tampered with before startup. It also offers a few other things, but this was the biggest change when going over to Windows 11, that a system requires the TPM 2.0 or higher. Microsoft says that this prevents people from using firmware or rootkit attacks. It helps with encryption and you absolutely need it for security. Regardless, a lot of PCs in the last, whatever, five, 10 years do have this feature. You just have to enable it in BIOS. So make sure to check if for some reason it says TPM 2.0 module isn't supported. You can use their checking tool. There are the PC health check, which if you click here, you can download. Again, I'm going to put this in the description below and it'll check your system and tell you whether or not what it's compatible with, what features it has. A pretty easy to use tool. And another option, downloading Windows 11 directly online. Most people don't understand that these images are freely available even for Microsoft Online. You can use the Windows 11 installation assistant, create Windows 11 install media, so create your own boot image, and you can literally download whatever ISO you need, including the Windows 11 multi-edition ISO for X6 devices and flash it onto a USB disk, put it in your computer and install completely fresh. Know that this is an option and you don't have to necessarily do the upgrade process if you're more comfortable with this or you wanna start completely fresh. Now just be careful with this as if you already have Windows 10 and you don't wanna pay for Windows 11, you need to verify your Windows 10 edition before you can get a free upgrade on that. So most users, probably best to at least try your update, but know that this is an option as well. Now, the wild part to me is just how much of the world is still running on Windows 10. It's actually just a little bit behind and was even higher just a few months ago, higher than people on Windows 11. So you, now we have a good understanding of why Microsoft wants you to go to Windows 11. Just a few months ago at the beginning of the year, the share was 60% was on Windows 10, according to stat counters, global stats, whereas Windows 11 was actually around 36%. Now that has flipped, of course, as people were preparing for this day. You can see we've been steadily dropping and now we're at around 40.84% for Windows 10 and 49.05 for Windows 11. This is still hundreds of millions of users who are now stuck with having to upgrade their operating system. And as the confusion ensues and privacy gets torn to shreds, I'm gonna make a whole different suggestion for you as I've done a completely different deep dive in another video suggesting the reasons to go to Linux at this point. I'm gonna post it in the description below, but I wanna talk about what users are telling us to go to based on people who have made the transition and switched to Linux. Some of the reasons you might want to switch to Linux. One, you don't wanna to go to Windows 11. Two, there's hardware incompatibility. Three, it's gonna cost you some amount of money. Linux is free to try, might as well try. But some of the biggest reasons are no ads, full privacy control with opt-in instead of opt-out privacy controls, there are a lot of reasons people will not switch or go to Linux. Fear of complexity or software compatibility, gaming gaps for those of us who use games that have anti-cheat. It has a big learning curve for users as well. We can understand that some tech savvy users or gamers with old PCs, privacy advocates, and budget limited households may go over to Linux. A majority, however, will stay with the unsupported Windows 10 or make the switch to Windows 11. Again, 40% of people have not made the switch yet, which is an insane amount of people who are gonna be left with security vulnerabilities if they don't make the switch. But here's the suggestions from my Linux community. Which Linux distribution would you suggest to a Windows user? So this is for people transitioning over from Windows. 3,500 votes on this poll alone. Linux Mint, 53% of people, or a little more than 1,800 people chose Linux Mint and why. This is because Linux Mint is very user-friendly. It's got a familiar Windows-like user interface. It's extremely stable. Everything just works. Excellent offline installer and no telemetry. This is great for beginners or people with older hardware who want that look and feel of Windows 7 or 10. So that is by far the biggest one. Ubuntu comes in second. This one has a very huge ecosystem with the best driver support. It's got commercial backing, tons of guides, 
And it's really for new users who just want the easiest way of installation with the maximum amount of community support and documentation. Zorin OS is probably the most well-supported lookalike for Windows 10 and 11. You can easily switch between the different appearances in Zorin and make it a much easier transition for you because things really just show up in the same locations that you would see on Windows 10 and 11. Also has very easy support for running your Windows apps as well. I, again, go in depth about making the switch over to Linux in a different video. I'm gonna post that at the bottom again. Hopefully this video helped you understand what your options are for making the switch over to either Linux, using the ESU extended security updates program, making an update through the system updates to Windows 11, or completely installing a brand new Windows 11 image and what requirements are necessary in order to go to Windows 11. Good luck out there. This is a big change for Windows 10 users. Hopefully you can make the transition easier on you with, with this knowledge. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about this Windows 11 forced upgrade or hardware upgrade. Don't forget to subscribe below, smash that like button for more videos like this. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.